It's another side that like wants to take more. It wants to go that one more round. Because like going that one more round when you don't think you can, that's what makes all the difference in your life. You know what I mean? Welcome to another episode of One More Round, the Rocky Series podcast. I am your host, Ryan, and with me today, of course, is the lovely Katie. And we now have... This guy doesn't look like Kyle. He sort of looks like Kyle. I, Kyle I don't have Rayner? the red filter on. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, there's no red filter. Jared is on the planet Earth. Jared, we've had you on before. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, Jared. Thank you for filling in for Kyle. He couldn't be here due to some family obligations and travel. Jared, welcome to the show. It's my pleasure. I always love doing the show. And we get treated with that perfect radio voice. Oh, <laughs> see, that's why I come back, because my friends don't tell me stuff like that. So. <laughs> well, Thank you need you. better friends. Well, not only does Jared have a good podcasting voice, he's he's got knowledge, insight, humor. I mean, he's just a better podcaster than us, quite frankly, Katie. I mean, oh. he should, I should probably just retire. You ever think about retiring? I do uh, like the beginning of your new season, Jared, on Hyperspace. I'm liking, I really liked the loyalty show. The loyalty, yes. But yeah, the loyalty stuff. I like it. Thank you. I'm the co-host of a show called uh, The Hyperspace, podcasting in the 25th century. We talk about a lot of nerd stuff, some science fiction stuff. Also, uh, we cover some of the same ground that Ryan and Katie and Kyle cover here. We talk about 80s movies. We grew up in the golden age of entertainment. Easily the best age of entertainment that's come so far. So if you have interest in stuff like that, come and subscribe and join the fun. You do have a great show. You're a great podcaster. I love podcasting with you. You've substituted for this show. And we've also podcasted together on the last of the Action Heroes Podcast Network, where we've covered Burt Reynolds films, and those will continue. We're going to yes. do some more in the summer. Summer, fall, we're going we're to knock out at least one or two more. And speaking of the days gone by or good days gone by regarding the 80s and 90s. Uh, Katie, why don't you plug your new podcast that you've started? Hopefully some of you have heard it, but if not, to piggyback off of what Jared was saying, the 80s and the 90s is when I grew up. And so I have a podcast called Retromade that focuses on themed seasons of movies. So season one is Kurt, pa- Kurt Russell and Patrick Swayze. <laughs> I'm just going to mash them together. Sure. Um, and so when we cover the movies with my guests, I take that time period and sprinkle in pop culture from that time period into the show. So it's a nice little blast from the past, walk down memory lane follow me on facebook um i have a youtube channel and then whatever however you get your podcasts retro made your pop culture rewind <laughs> oh see you got that podcaster voice in there at the end <laughs> that was a great little uh great little plug at the end there i like your tagline yeah all right well you, you guys are great i mean you 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 humble me with your great podcasting ability i've been doing this for six years and for six years the public's been sticking it to me <laughs> Um, Anyways, yeah, this is uh, fantastic. We're going to roll right into it. We have no emails, but if you do want to send us an email, just check the show notes. I kind of always forget what the email is. I think it's one more round podcast or something like that. But check the show notes for the email. Send us an email. Rate and like us on our uh, whatever avenue you listen to us, whether it's uh, the YouTube channel. Give us a like, share. You know, it makes us feel good about ourselves. We want to uh, say thank you to those who have commented on our YouTube channel. Yeah, well, let's get going. Because we've got some stuff to talk about. Let's talk about, you know what, let's talk about the Family Stallone show first. Let's do that one first. So there's a new reality show out on Paramount Plus starring the Sylvester Stallone family, Jennifer, Sophia, Sistine, Scarlett, and of course Sly. They are the Family Stallone. How many episodes did you guys watch? I was able to watch two. I watched them both. Great. Okay, so we watched both. Jared, what's your overall feelings or insight on the uh, Family Stallone on Paramount Plus? I am not generally a fan of reality shows. Uh, I think the last one I watched with any regularity was in the early 90s, The Real World. Oh, wow. Uh, A a true reality show. Yeah, which is (laughs) like probably one of the first reality shows ever. Mm -hmm. 
you know, in the subsequent years have had really no interest in any of these housewives or Kardashians or any of that nonsense. This show held some interest for me, of course, sure. being a Stallone fan and also having been fortunate enough to work professionally with uh, Jennifer um, oh, yeah. in past years. It's kind of interesting to see her again. I actually have some frame of reference for what I'm seeing on TV and how I've interacted with her in real life. I thought it was interesting. I think less so as we get into sort of the daughter's lives. We st- I think we start getting into some Kardashian areas there. But I thought all the stuff with Sly and Jennifer and Frank was <laughs> pretty interesting. Overall, I mean, I didn't hate it. Since you've had interactions with Jennifer, how did you feel she was portrayed? It seemed to be pretty authentic to the person that I've worked with in the past. She was always, I mean, nothing but lovely to me and to everybody who she was working with. Just a a real sweetheart. It's nice that you can say that about somebody who's famous. What's in the show seems to be pretty authentic. She tell tales out of school about Sly sometimes, about how he was just a goofball and he drove everybody nuts. It was interesting to get those glimpses. This show seems to bear that out. Sly does seem to be almost this goofball that the women just sort of tolerate. Indeed. Well, I too would like to preface that I am maybe the only woman on the planet that doesn't watch The Real Housewives of whatever and the Kardashian. Like, I don't care for that type of television either. And therefore, I was nervous when I heard about this show being in production that it might, I don't know, in some way, like slice slumming it, so to speak, or that sure. it may somehow tarnish his legacy. So I was trying to be open-minded. It's not groundbreaking television by any means. It was very carefully staged, as most reality TV is. It's all scripted. Yeah, it was great to see Frank, Dolph. I loved seeing Dolph. We get a little sly must be friends with Al Pacino as well, which, you know, so those are fun. You know, there's only two episodes. So I'm really more interested to see how they are going to portray the separation, even the new dog. I'm a little bit nervous about the Rottweiler. The family has three, I think they're Cavapoos. I like a Rottweiler type dog. And so I was glad to see when Sly got that dog. And so I'm nervous that maybe they don't have him anymore. I'm curious how they're going to portray that because I'm a big rescue dog person. That makes me a little nervous. And then the other thing that is, for me, an elephant in the room is we never hear about the prior family. Do these daughters even know Sergio? Sly seemingly never speaks about his other, his sons. And so Sergio would be in his mid-40s now. It seems like the daughters barely know Frank. I agree with you totally. Both of you were all on the same page. I totally agree with the elf in the room. Regarding the uh, the Rottweiler, if you want to do the timeline, I think what we saw was pre-tattoo, because I know he got the tattoo cover-up of Jennifer on his arm. So something went down enough during that short separation where he got the new dog, then she leaves. So we haven't seen the Rottweiler. So we actually have Gert, a listener in our chat right now, Gert from our Discord channel, who asked the question, where's the Rottweiler? My answer to that, Gert, is... The Rottweiler is not in their house yet. The timeline hasn't reached right. there. Yeah, I'm curious about it too, Gert. Very curious. If and when the Rottweiler is introduced in the show, I mean, it could literally just be edited out like the way the Rocky robot is edited out in the director's cut of Rocky Four. We just might have the uh, edit of the Rottweiler might not be introduced or they do introduce the dog in the show as per the timeline and we see the trouble it causes and the riff or some sort of riff because Sly does get that tattoo that was not a prank or a joke or done for tv like he got his tattoo covered up just before the separation with jennifer that was a big indication regarding the script i know you said scripted katie i know you're not meaning that their dialogue is scripted because it's not it's the situations are planned that's probably the best way to say it yeah so that's the better way of saying it well think about it obviously they talk to like i talk to my family all the time like i talk to them but it's boring if you just watch me talk to my kids at home so why don't we go to a gun range and then have a conversation? That's all it is. So they give them activities that might not be the natural activity they are doing, dot, dot, dot. So they're like, Ryan, I want you to have a father-son discussion with your son about his girlfriend. 
But doing it in the kitchen and every episode or everything in the kitchen is kind of boring. So why don't you go to the gun range or why don't you go to the waterside park or why don't you? So after the event, they film some of the fun you're having and then you have your discussion. That's where people sometimes have a hard time with quote unquote reality shows. How I look at reality shows is the events are planned, but the conversations are still somewhat legit. Like you're still getting their personalities. Like you're still Mm -hmm. getting some idea of how they're like and i will say unlike the kardashians i know you can even set that but not that you're saying that's what they're like these young daughters uh young ladies they do seem pretty grounded and they seem well loved it seems like they come from a home where they do love their father they do love their mother they have a great relationship and i think the idea of sly being protective is very real i mean i'm that way and i'm like 35 years younger than him so he's very old school so his daughters should never grow up. They don't ever get to be with boys. So these are real things that any, you know, there's nothing here that's unbelievable is what I'm saying. Probably the realest moment in those two episodes was where one of the daughters faked a pregnancy. Was, I was okay. genuinely averted my eyes because you could tell he was like, turn all this stuff off. Cause I'm about to lose, really lose my temper. Yeah, it was at his like birthday dinner too. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. What's with these babies? Uh. With this terrible <laughs> cake. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know. It was cringy in that I thought that was kind of overly done. I don't know. I didn't I didn't really like that. But to your point about the real thing, I actually appreciated hearing them say it's a big challenge for them dating with their last name. Everyone is just trying to basically date their dad, get their script in, get the, you know, meet him and that they don't know who's being genuine or not. They do have their issues that they talk about. And I'm actually surprised they're revealing some of the things they're revealing. Like the daughter's talking about how they have z- almost zero relationship with Frank. They don't know Frank very much. I find that very, I don't say telling is the right word. I found that very surprising that they don't really hang out with Frank. They've been to his house once, which I kind of get. I have nieces and nephews. They don't come to my house often, but I think I've seen my nieces and nephews more than Frank has regarding that issue. What do you think of Frank's his bro- museum? Like sli- yeah, a museum of his brother. Well, let's pretend you have siblings, right? Let's say one of your siblings was a celebrity. I wouldn't have one piece of memorabilia of my brother's stuff. I would be, hey, cool job, awesome. I'm really happy for you, but I wouldn't have his movie posters, action figures. My kids, maybe because they're your kids, but a sibling, I find that really odd that he has all this sly stuff in his home. It is strange. I I guess I was surprised that they portrayed it, that the daughters thought it was so strange. I guess it just painted Frank in not the best light. Your siblings aren't one of the most famous people in the world, and Sly is. I I, I, I get it, but but I got to know me. I have to know me more than anybody in the world. I've seen stuff about other super famous people that there's people around them kind of collect their stuff in a the, similar way. So I find the sibling relationship different than a parent child. If it was my kids, it's totally different. The museum that Frank had is ridiculous. It's everywhere in his house. He can't even make love to a girl that comes over next to his hot tub without having sly look down. That's, That's part of how he gets ladies. Maybe <laughs> I guess. The, the giant bathtub right next to his bed, which is Sly's hand me down bed. He right. had that very odd conversation with his nieces <laughs> Hey, uh, you guys were probably conceived right here. What? And his fly was open? Like, why yes, did he keep uh, all that in the episode? Well, I just, like, they're, it's They're making big... him look like a, a complete goofball. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's yeah. crazy Uncle Eddie. You know, he's, mm-hmm. I mean, that's how he's portrayed in this show. But part of me was like, you know, he's going down. He's got, you know, Apollo's trunks framed and all this stuff. And part of me is like, holy crap. He's got millions, probably millions of dollars worth of stuff in his basement. Part of me as a Rocky fan is my head's exploding. But part of me, when you see the sly autographing stuff for his brother (laughs) is to Frank. Thanks for being there. And, (laughs) and Frank has all this stuff lovingly mounted and in shadow boxes that does strike me as strange, (laughs) but the Rocky fan part of me is like, I want to go there and steal everything. The stuff he has is legit. The owner of it's weird. Correct. Donald brings up a point. I caught this too in the episode where he was bothered that the kids called him Sly, but they also referred him as his father too. So it was both. I have some familiarity with how this kind of thing works. That's probably something that was actually suggested to them by the producers of the show to sort of reinforce 
that he's sly. I would imagine they just call him dad right. normally. They've been coached to probably do that. We won't do this necessarily every episode, but oh, maybe we will. I don't know. Katie and I will definitely... We'll do a little bit of a family still own report. <laughs> I, oh, my wife watched it with us, by the way, or with me. And it's fine. I just put it on. I didn't give her any warning. I just put it on. She did this when I first put it on. She goes, Ugh. but she was engaged. She got right wrapped up into it. She enjoys my fandom of Sly, but she could, doesn't care. Like she's watched the Rocky films, enjoyed them, but she just knows that I'm a huge fan, right? As a non-Sly fanatic, she enjoyed the show. I think it's a well put together show. She actually enjoyed watching it. To speak to you, Jared, what you said about Jennifer, that's nice to hear. And that's really good to hear. As somebody I know who I've talked to on the show, on our podcast, somebody I talked to offline, he also has many, has had many inter- encounters with Jennifer because he's been to Slice Home many times. He has also told me that Jennifer in, well, in real life is a genuine person, a very sweet, kind, good person. So that's good to see that's. She seems that way on TV, so that's not even an edit, so to speak. She just seems to be a sweetheart mm-hmm. and a lovely woman. Yeah, that is good to hear. Also, Sly does look pretty good. I thought he looked he looks really great. good. He yeah, looks great. He is head over heels for Jennifer. If the separation is anyone's fault, it's Sly's. A hundred percent. Okay. As much as yeah. I love him, and this is probably why I uh, am single. I can't stand someone all the time. Even someone like Sly, who I love, I would be annoyed by him if I was around him all the time. (laughs) And so he's always spelled off Rocky wisdom stuff. I love it. I think (laughs) their relationship is, it makes sense now. This was news to me, but it does make sense. Like he's basically gone half the time. Mm -hmm. And that's my kind of marriage. Okay, so now we got a little bit something different here, folks. I hope you guys don't mind this. Strap in, this could be a big episode. We got on our. Facebook page. Somebody posted. His name is Paul. I won't say his last name, but I did check his Facebook profile. This individual posted in their Facebook group a video that I guess he made. So he posted his YouTube link of something he made in the channel. It said, fine, I'll watch it. I commented on the link before I watched it because I thought my brain, it was titled, is Mickey really that great or something to that effect? And I thought he was speaking of generally, is he a good trainer? Here's the title. Was Mickey Goldmill a good manager? So I just read the title as the question, is he a good manager? And I, and I made the mention in our, in our group said, yeah, you know, we've questioned that very thing on our podcast a lot this season that we don't think he's a good manager. So I said that, and then he wrote as a response, he goes, have you really? Man, I'm so out of the loop, which I'm like, okay, well, there's no loop. I guess you just don't listen to the show, which is fine. (laughs) There's a lot of people that don't listen to our show that are in the uh, Rocky and Ramble series podcast group on Facebook. That's fine. They treat it like a fan page. It's not. It's supposed to be a podcast page. That's fine. And then I said, yes, not like for full episodes, but just a side notes. We've mentioned that Mickey probably isn't the best trainer slash like he's not very good at his job, not his personality, but just his job. And then he goes on to say, good to see we have we share some reviews. I'm like, okay. So then I watched it. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't agree with the video. We're going to get into that. We don't share some reviews, Paul. And then I clicked on Paul's Facebook link. It's one of those weird fake. There's nothing on it. He has a mm. Return of the Jedi banner for his background no friends that i can hey, see what's wrong with that no it's nothing wrong with that but then his picture his picture is the guy from i think it's supernatural i think yeah it's not him that's fine he uses facebook as a thing just to share things in groups that's fine there's i'm not shaming anyone for that maybe the name is real that's why i'm not going to give the last name so let's call him paul so we're going to share the video i'm going to share it with you guys we're going to talk about it point by point i think the easiest way to discuss this video because he offers the challenge to the facebook group and then the video itself is the challenge or the the conversation he wants to have he he asks for this he wants people to comment he also said well let me come on the show while you guys go through it i'm like no that's not going to happen we'll just listen to what he has to say and you guys watched it too so i don't even know your thoughts we're all going to share our thoughts cold together maybe you totally agree with them or so that's fine. We'll go it together. So here Hello, go. and today we are here to talk about the character of Mickey Goldmill on, from wait, the Rocky yes. franchise featuring from 1976 to 1990. My problem. Yeah. We all love yeah. Mickey Goldmill. Can I ask you guys a question? Is he using an AI voice thing? I think so. Okay. I yeah. thought so too. Because there's a couple of things that are said throughout this video. And I'm sorry, Paul. I don't mean to be critical, but I'm going to be a little bit. Because if this was me doing a video, I would use my voice. Imagine this podcast using AI as a voice, because when you talk like this the whole time and no one, it's ever very monotone, no inflection. Yeah. yeah. And there's a couple sentences where I think he might've 
do you, how does this work? Do you input the text and it reads it for you? Is that how it works? Or I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyways, because there's a couple sentences in this video that don't kind of make sense. I'm I'm going to ask you guys what you heard and what I think is being said. Okay. Wonderful, colorful character, and I do not believe the Rocky franchise would have been a mega hit without him. He is the pepper in the dish that gives it that unique taste. However, I do have a theory on Mickey. And okay, so he's saying that, yeah, we all love Mickey. He's a great character. He adds a pepper to the dish. So, so far, I'm on board. Like, yeah, Mickey is an invaluable, fun character. I mean, integral character to the first three Rocky films, the Rocky character, his journey as a person. All good so far. Now, he's from the UK, according to the Facebook page. It looks like he is from the UK. So that's why I thought, too, it's a AI because it's, no, it's not a British accent. Are you able to use different ethnic personalities for your ai is that how it works too you can select like, a voice yeah. like you know what i mean can you be like irish or or african white? american <laughs> yeah like white black i because it sounds like a non-white yeah, absolutely okay all right all right i just want to okay because racism is brought up later in the video so i wonder if yes. that was yeah okay that is he is not as nice as we are meant to believe he is by the time game. of rocky three do i believe that mickey grows to love rocky yes he has given him a successful story of a management career. He has given him a successful story of a management career. Who is the he in that sentence? Yeah, I, I don't uh, know. Rocky, I think. But Rocky's he, given him a story? He Rocky's has given him a management career. Rocky is the one who has given him that management career. Okay, but you get what I'm saying? I do. And I can oh. hear through these headphones that that is an AI voice, 100%. Okay. Did he love Rocky from the start? No way. Mickey gave up on Rocky the day he went into being a debt collector. There's some inaccuracies here, I have to say. So the question is, did Mickey love Rocky from the start? Well, no. No one's ever thought that. So that's not a bad character. That's just, no. he's just a man to another man. He had no relationship with Rocky in the sense of Rocky was a fighter at the gym. He had some talent, but he became a leg breaker for a second-rate loan shark. So Mickey had no time for him. You know, he's busy training other people that are contenders. But he kind of labels it like that's a bad characteristic. The reality is, is Rocky's nobody. The premise of this video from the get-go is flawed. He was not interested in him. Rocky politely asks why. He tells him. They shout. See, that's funny. So Rocky... <laughs> he Rocky tells him. They shout. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that just kills me. It's just like, no offense, Paul, but if you're in Why not just use your voice? Well, yeah, why not just use your voice? But also, why are you... The, the dialogue you're inputting to the AI. So this one, is is Paul putting the dialogue into the AI? Or is the AI curating information from something? I think it's it's reading what has been typed. But I don't understand why he wrote that then, the way he did. Rocky asks him. He shouts. We know the scene is like... <laughs> He's saying, I've been coming here for six years, and for six years, you've been sticking to me. I want to know who will come. Anyway, so. I want to know. He didn't proofread his copy that was input. Very, you Maybe. know what I mean? Like, that's Maybe. just, you know, didn't give it a once-over, perhaps. Suddenly, when Rocky gets offered a title shot, Mickey offers his services. To waste but wait, my time why? Trying to train a because of success. Like you, you bum. He wants the acclaim that he lead Rocky to the title. That is the hey, only Rocky reason. Because uh, Okay. If Mickey was a man of principles, he should. Okay, yeah, we got to start. Okay, this big one's coming. So we know what happens in the film. That Rocky gets a one lifetime shot. We know the whole story, of course. It's a total fluke. It's a, it, Mickey even says it's a fluke. It's a luck of, you know, it's a freak of luck. He recognizes that. And absolutely, he recognizes. He mentioned earlier in the film that he knew that Rocky had potential. So Mickey already knew that. And Mickey was upset that Rocky no, never focused on the potential that he did have. So Mickey mm -hmm. was mad about that. Mm -hmm. Now he's got this freak luck that he's now going to fight the champion. So Mickey's like, you know what? We just fast forward six years of crap. I want to give you what I have up here. You know, yeah. he's trying to tell Rocky, look, now you have a chance. You have a chance. The greatest shot in the world. Why not? Let's I am going to hitch my wagon to your car. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. to your horse. And Absolutely. Mickey comes to Rocky with his literally his hat in his hand. He's not going in there going, hey, OK, I'm going to train you now. And Rocky gives it back to him. He's like, yes. you don't care about me. Where was I 10 years ago? I, I need your help. And Mickey knows that he's in a very awkward situation. He knows exactly how it looks. So he knows what this, he knows that's how it looks, but he's like, okay, yes, we, he's saying, yeah, we both have an opportunity or you were given an opportunity and now I can help you with that opportunity. Absolutely. But he wasn't looking for success. Mickey did not do this 
to become the greatest manager in the world. And that's what kind of what he's saying here in this video, that he wanted the money. He talks later about the money. He mm -hmm. didn't, Mickey did not care about the money or success. He actually loved the world of boxing and wanted to be a part of Rocky's journey. Absolutely. And the trials and tribulations that they had that you guys were just discussing is what builds a relationship. It starts in the first movie and, and we see it over the subsequent movies. And in real life, that's how a relationship is built, not just on happy, sunny times. Interestingly enough, this video is laid over scenes from Rocky Two, not it's all from, over the place. Not from mm -hmm. the, the conversation True. he's Good talking point. about. Should have let Rocky train himself. He knew Rocky was helping loan sharks get their money. He is willing to put all that behind him now that the world is noticing Rocky. If Apollo did not offer him the chance of the title, Mickey would not even be thinking about Rocky. That dialogue doesn't make sense. He says here that maybe Mickey wouldn't be thinking about Rocky. Well, no, that's the whole point is he would just be another bump in the neighborhood. You mm -hmm. know, why would Mickey? Mickey didn't think about a lot of boxers in that uh, gym. Rocky was just another boxer mm -hmm. that Mickey wasn't interested in. Again, that's not a flaw. It's just the reality of Mickey's world. Your initial comment is, yeah, you're like, yeah, we've talked about this. This isn't new information. This isn't news. Let's move on to the sequel, Rocky 2. In Rocky 2, Mickey is nowhere to be seen whilst Rocky is spending all his money. He is only interested in Rocky when again, he is offered the chance of the title. Holy he comes to the God. wedding. He comes to the wedding. That's and he's what I not mean. a this fighter is... anymore. Like, I don't hang out with my old boss. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, Paul. I got a, I got a couple of hot prospects. Yeah. That's right. That's right. He said, uh, we're going to a couple of hot. And then Rock goes, are they good? <laughs> yeah. <they're good. laughs> Turns so, into the Muppet show when we start doing these <laughs> voices. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jared. You, know, you listen to the show. I can't help myself. So, I mean, no offense, Paul. So, this is completely wrong. Like, this is not even an opinion. This is actually not factually wrong about. What happens in the events of Rocky 2? Mickey and Rocky have a complete love and mutual respect. Mickey came to Rocky's wedding. He was one of the few <laughs> favored guests at the wedding. They had a conversation at the wedding where they're talking about the future prospects. And then on top of that, when Rocky came back, his hat in hand, asking Mickey to train him for the rematch, or he wants to go into fighting again, not before the rematch. He just wants to go into fighting. He wants to be around it. This is before even Nepal. Mickey's like, Basically, I love you, kid, but you don't you don't have the goods. I'm trying to protect you. Now he's actually saying, I want to protect you. Why? Because I care about you. Mickey only wanted to train Rocky when he, Paul really started insulting Rocky and their integrity as boxers and personalities. So this is all completely wrong, Paul. So I do apologize to say this, but your your whole thesis on the Rocky II thing is absolutely false. Yeah. Like, and Mickey was a huge part of his and, life before the fight. You know, Mickey is not his family member and he's not his father. So Mickey would not be around when Rocky is buying a car and no. buying a house. And it's, it's ridiculous. It, it, yeah. It's like Katie said, it's like, you know, my boss doesn't need to come down when I make a large purchase or if I'm <laughs> buying stuff. He shows him his outer space monster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he does. That oh, sounds man. really filthy. And I don't yeah. even have a key to my... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it looks like a snake. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> but it won't bite. He starts sniffing around Rocky when his wife is in a coma. Sniffing oh. around? Ooh. See, what, what does that mean? I'm sorry. And Donald brings up a good point here. This is what happens when AI when AI does your homework, kids. Yeah. And so this is what point, I mean. Donald. Is this AI scouring the net? Because if you put in chat GPT, you can actually put in like, for example, for one, I did it for one of our movie reviews. Just like, give me a plot of, uh, what movie was it? <sighs> it'll get things older... wrong. You can't like, yeah. It, yes. It, yeah. It'll, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the guy who made this, Paul, he still had to put these pictures together and the, and the text and stuff. Yeah. So he had to have listened to this. So if you're relying on AI, now AI is great to give you a starting point, to give you some sort of structure to build around. But if you don't put that human element in, mm -hmm. Mickey did not come sniffing around. It's the complete opposite. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. They started this before Adrian was in a coma. And mm -hmm. he says he started sniffing around when Adrian was in a coma. That No, that they started training for this fight. Well before Adrian fell into her coma. Exactly. To me, that is kind of heartless. Yes, he stays with Rocky. That is a touching aspect. But if it was not for Adrian waking up and giving Rocky her approval, the fight would not have occurred. He says he's heartless, but then he's good. So it doesn't even make sense. And yes, of course the fight wouldn't have occurred had Adrian not. But again, it has nothing to do with Mickey. 
if Adrian had not woken waking up from the coma and said when Rocky had already said, we talked about this in our last or our last episode, I think that yeah, Rocky had already said, you know what, you're more important. He had realized that his family is more important. Adrian's the most important thing, the baby. He doesn't care about Apollo. They'll figure out another way. Yes, of course, Adrian saying when gave Rocky and of course Mickey the permission. Go guys, go get it done. Pay for these hospital bills. This has nothing to do with Mickey. Adrian's win has nothing to do with Mickey. Mickey's not a bad or a good person in this situation. Mm -hmm. How long would Mickey have stayed with Rocky? Nobody would know for sure. Let's move on to Rocky 3. Well, if Rocky retired from boxing, they'd just be acquaintances and friends. And maybe yeah. Rocky would still yeah, work at the gym part-time. Yeah. Mickey has been fooling Rocky into fighting lower-class boxers. Making Rocky believe he was better than he was. This to me is the ultimate betrayal. A manager would train their boxer to fight whoever tried to tackle him. Tackle? That is how the sport should be played. Fairly. Making him fight weaker, easier boxers is not teaching Rocky anything. It proves that Mickey is driven by money. He won't He's not driven by money. He was protecting his fighter. Yeah, all of it's okay. false. That whole segment. That's not how the sport is played. No, the sport is actually played by what Mickey says. They weren't handpicked, but they also weren't killers. That's my job is to keep you winning and to keep you healthy. Just keep you healthy and keep you safe, keep you winning. That's his job. Yeah. Yeah. He said they were good fighters. They just yeah. weren't these killing machines. And now he recognizes Clever Lang's coming up the right. Yeah, this guy's this guy's gonna he'll kill you in three rounds. This guy's just a different beast, man. This is no offense, Rocky, but there's people coming up that are dangerous. And I'm I'm not in the business of lining these people. That goes, this guy probably doesn't know boxing, how it works. This is how it works. This is mm -hmm. the job of any, Tony did the same thing with uh, Apollo in part two. Let it go, man. This guy isn't good for us. Let it go. Mm -hmm. That was exactly Tony's job to keep his fighter safe. And Mickey, the money business, Mickey lives in Rocky's house. It's not like he has his own palatial <laughs> gym somewhere. No. He's a live-in, a family member. Mm -hmm. At this point, he is. Yeah. And I'm sure Rocky is just taking care of all of Mickey's needs at this mm -hmm. point. Mickey's living there rent-free. Yeah. And I'm sure he takes care of Mickey's health care and all that stuff. Of course. I mean, he's living in a mansion, but I don't know if Mickey's rich. He doesn't, he doesn't have buy to new underwear. He no, doesn't yeah. buy new underwear. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. maybe that's why he's rich because he's saving money on underwear. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have to buy underwear anymore. Train him to fight Clubber because he knows he has failed as a manager. <laughs> but for some reason, we are force fed the notion that it is done out of love. We're force fed the notion. Where is this dialogue coming from? Paul, are you writing this garbage? I'm no, sorry. I don't, I don't think I could be wrong, but it, this does not seem like a person who's all that versed in the Rocky universe. No, he said that he has been a fan for, oh. he says here in the write-up, first of all, I adore these movies, but I want people's thoughts on this. Does anyone feel this hmm. way about Mickey? So that was the write-up he wrote. And I, I wrote on the Facebook page, or sorry, on his YouTube video, I wrote, I don't agree with you, and we're going to talk about this on our next episode. I wrote that on the YouTube page. Well, and so he got what he wanted out of it. Yeah, yeah, he got reaction. It's great. I do not believe this, and if it was then, it has backfired. It ultimately means that Rocky loses. He loses not only Mickey, but the title. Disgracefully. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> complete, completely disgraced. Yeah, what a, what a disgrace Rocky is. His head wasn't in the match because his trainer and father figure was dying in the change room. And Mickey forced them out there. Uh, what do you mean after this time? You don't have to do? Yes, it's completely disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> He is bad character. No way. He is amazing. He is touching, endearing, and a wonderful part of the Rocky saga. So which one is it? So he just said he's a piece of crap. The whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's money hungry. He, yeah, and now he's he amazing, touching, and an essential part of the Rocky saga. <laughs> is he as wonderful as we believe? Not a chance. So that doesn't make sense. He just finished saying, is he a wonderful, great character, heartwarming, endearing? Yes, absolutely. Is he as great as we think? No, he's a piece of crap. Well, then which one is it? Which avenue are we chasing here? Stallone originally wrote Mickey to be a racist. But that got changed. Rightfully so. But if he was originally a racist, then what else could he have been? And they changed. If he was a racist, what else could have Mickey been? Well, it turns out he was a pedophile. Yeah, <laughs> he, was he was also an alien. 
Mickey is an old school, a little bigoted. We know that we see it through the movie. Yes. I mean, he, he uses a person's ethnicity. No. I don't think it's yeah. in a cruel way. It's just like the old man it's way. It's that casual 60s and 70s racism yeah. that <laughs> some of our grandparents may have been guilty of. Yeah. Uh, just, <laughs> it, you know, it's not abject hatred. It's just, yes. once again, not excusing it. It's how some people talked in those he, days. Well, he told Rocky, sweat that olive oil out of you. Yeah, he, you know? he's, he does use some terms. But just think about how much worse it could yeah, have been. Exactly. Yeah, like, but we'd still have Polly. <laughs> Polly is openly oh, no, racist. No, Polly, <laughs> I mean, doesn't really hide it. <laughs> but where's the video about Polly? <laughs> oh, that's coming next. The video that's of Polly is just the movies. <laughs> you don't <Yeah>. have <laughs> <laughs> Polly says, I don't like these people. <laughs> There's all kinds of instances of a Polly, but. This was the thing that stood out to me the most, being offended at, at what a character could have been. Could have been, yeah. Seems to put just over a cliff for me. It was supposed to be Adrian's, I think it was supposed to be Adrian. Oh, yeah, Polly. Sorry, Polly was Adrian's mother. That was the original script. And she was racist. So what they did was is they made Polly still racist, and she was Jewish too, but they made Mickey Jewish. That's something like mm -hmm. to that effect. Yeah. Maybe this is why I feel the way I do about Mickey Goldmill. Knowing that he was originally scripted to use racism has always stuck in my head. Paul saying via AI voice that he doesn't like Mickey because Mickey was supposed to be a racist. Yeah, th which is crazy. <laughs> oh, okay. To conclude, if you like this video and agree with my views, then great. Then, then great. great. <laughs> If we're on the same page, then great. Now, check this out, guys, because we're about to be called out because we don't agree with the video. Now, this is where we fall. Check it out. You can see deeper than the average moviegoer. We can't. That's right. We do not see deeper than the average moviegoer. But if you want to stand toe to toe with me, then go ahead. We did. Oh. Rocky was my life at one point. So when you go to rewatch Rocky, question Mickey's motives. And remember, to. he was supposed to be a racist. <laughs> he was well, supposed so to be a racist. Well, so it sounds like either the AI or the person behind the AI used to be a fan and is no longer. Oh, good point. So maybe Paul, when he discovered that the character was... Okay, well, now that I know that, I don't like these movies anymore. <laughs> I'm going to log off here. I can't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. Question, what was his driving force behind helping Rocky? Because he was a boxing manager and he saw a golden goose and hitched his wagon to it. Absolutely. Was it love or was it success? It became love, which ended up being successful. Yes, he was a boxing trainer, but had he led anyone to a title shot? Now, that's a straw man again. So because I made the point that, yeah, life is his boxing. He's the trainer. This is what he does. But he's saying. He's a lousy trainer because nobody's won the championship under Mickey. That's that goes yeah. for ninety nine point nine percent of yeah, all exactly. boxing trainers. Exactly. Like, how many hockey coaches? I'm a hockey fan, so there's NHL coaches. Thirty two of them. Only one of them wins the cup a year. So all the other thirty ones are lousy coaches. Like that doesn't yeah. make sense. That's just, the only yeah. metric of success, Ryan. That's okay, it. is to be the world champion. Mm -hmm. Okay, world. so how many pilots are there who have become astronauts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Okay. There you go. I would say no. As it seemed that in the flashback in Rocky V, that Mickey was an absolute angel. Rocky looking through Rose tinted glasses at a wonderful flashback scene that was purely put into Rocky V to make it emotional. Well, it was emotional, but it wasn't <clears throat> purely put that way. It was done to showcase Rocky was looking back on a part of his life that meant a lot to him when he was in the bottom dregs of his life. He looked at something that meant a lot to him. He's basically saying that that scene was put in to somehow cover the sins of Mickey's character. Mm. When someone that means something to you passes away, you do look back on their memory with rose-colored glasses. That's just human nature. Yeah, nature's smarter than people think. Yeah. Mickey was as bad as Rocky collecting debts. As he was... <laughs> <laughs> was not earning an honest living. End of discussion. So you, you can thank me later. <laughs> <laughs> thank you? <laughs>
So that was by Paul, who goes by the YouTube channel Easy Maniac. That's E Z M A N I A C altogether. Easy Maniac on YouTube. Check him out. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to make anybody feel takes the time to put together a video about Rocky that we're just sitting here making fun of it. I, I took some cheap shots, you know, with the AI voice and all that. And I, I apologize for that. But he did invite disagreement. And I disagree with the thesis of that video. I promise not to take no cheap shots, neither. So, <laughs> I, well, look, I, didn't, I didn't take any cheap Jared's shots. Jared's more I'm diplomatic sorry. than I. Yes. Yeah. Is, you're so, so kind of you. And I, yeah, I, did, I mean, it was, yeah, you're kind of inviting us to pick it apart. And we did. <laughs> I don't know. We went toe to toe. And that's how we fight back. I'm sorry. If I fight dirty, I'm sorry there, Paul. Wasn't my intention. <laughs> but to speak to what Jared was saying. Yeah. Keep making videos. Absolutely. Keep making those engagements out there for people to listen to. Here's my recommendation as somebody who's podcasted for a few years. Use your voice, unless you're not embarrassed, but shy, maybe that's fine. Because when you use human emotion, you can make a better argument. Sometimes you can convince people just by using your emotion, the human part of it. Okay, I'm just queuing up here, guys, where we are in the coma scene. So he kisses her goodnight, and I think we go to the chapel. So that's our next scene here. Rocky is at the one of the biggest chapels in hospital history. This, this is a huge chapel for a hospital. <laughs> so he's sitting there, meditating, praying, and Mickey walks in. All right. Uh, it's three in the morning. You know that I, uh, I went up to your house there. They told me you was here. Who did? Who? They? I'm assuming Polly is probably there. Okay. Gloria, maybe? Watching the dog? Yeah. Yeah. It's three in the morning, Rocky. If you haven't looked at your watch yet. I, it's like telling the audience it's late at night, which... It kind of speaks to it's just been one long day so far. Is that mm -hmm. what we're led to believe? Okay. The 3 a.m., kid. <laughs> Three tight twice. Is that uh, Adrian? She's a good girl. Me, you know, I'm sorry for both of you. Hmm? This scene alone proves that Mickey is not here for the money. Mm -hmm. This is an integral scene. To Mickey's character. Mm -hmm. But Mickey is a racist. Mm hmm. <laughs> i like to tell you something once, and then I, I ain't going to say it again. This part is very interesting because he's come in. He's offered his condolences. He says it's late. Uh, Adrian's just recovering. I've heard it. She's a lovely girl. This part is, you know, this may be the part that Paul, the YouTube guy, could almost make an argument for because now he's about to make his last little plea here about, hey, just, just a reminder, we do have a fight coming up. He's doing his job. He is just being supportive. He's understanding that this is a, an extremely hard time for Rocky and that this is an almost impossible situation in Rocky's head. But hey, just as a reminder, this is still happening. You got to get whatever in your brain, right? Because now or never. This scene, it works in a movie. I don't know in real life if you would come to somebody in a situation where your spouse may be dying and say... Hey, uh, let's get back to work. What do you say? It works in the film, but I don't think it rings really true for me anyway. I get why it's here, but I don't think this is a conversation someone would have in this actual situation. Do you feel I, like it I would agree. be more, hey, should we just call this off? You tell me, tell me the words and I'll. A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. He actually kind of gets in his face and said, come on, get, fight him hard. Don't lay down for him. Well, hey, guess what? My wife is in a coma. So once you yeah. get out of my face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very awkward scene in some mm -hmm. to some degree. Great acting by, of course, by uh, Meredith. Just very great acting. Integral part of the storyline, I agree, to show you where Mickey's kind of his head mm -hmm. is at. Rocky, of course, doesn't say a word the whole time, which is some indication of what's in his head. So I found this whole part where he gives his spiel, but the, he kind of saves himself at the end. So we'll play that out here. Rocky got a, a another shot. It's a second shot at the uh, I don't know the biggest title in the world, and you're going to be swapping punches with with the most dangerous fighter in the world. And just in case, right here, this part here, is you fine. know, your brain ain't working so good. All this happens pretty soon, and you ain't ready. You're nowhere near you, you know, you're in shape. So I say, you know, for God's sake, why don't you stand up and fight this guy hard like you've done before? That was beautiful. 
Now, I think the only saving grace here I can say for Mickey is this is the conversation he was trying to have before the Adrian got sick. Mm -hmm. Just moments before, like 12 hours ago, whatever it was, five in the afternoon. Now it's three in the morning. Mickey probably doesn't have a very good bedside manner right now. Like his wife's, you know, maybe in his mind, Adrian's alive. She's just resting. You might not understand it's a coma. Maybe he hasn't been told it's a coma for all we know. Like she's just resting. Has anyone told Mickey she's in a literal coma? So you could argue that. So now he's like, okay, I've got some time here just to remind Rocky. Hey, just so you know, when that lady of yours wakes up, we got we got some work to do here. And this is what I was trying to tell you earlier, and you weren't listening. Maybe you'll listen now. That's the only saving grace I can kind of give him on this. It is his job. He's doing his job again. Like, to, I agree that he's just right words, wrong comes, place. But he's not wrong. You know, a week from now, you might or a year from now, you might look back on this situation and really regret. You are not going to get this chance again. So take it and do it right. I agree. But don't lay it down in front of him like this. Like, a, I don't know, like a, some kind of mongrel or something. Because he's going to kick your face in pieces. You know that? That's right. This guy just don't want to win, you know. He wants to bury you. He wants to humiliate you. He wants to prove to the whole world that it was nothing but some kind of a, a freak the first time out. That he said you are one time lucky bum. Oh, bum count. Bum count, yeah. Well, now. Rocky changed his facial expression there a little bit. Does some of that register to him? Does some of that get into his fighting spirit a little bit? He's going to negate the purpose of the first movie if he doesn't. Mickey is getting in his head saying, like, you wanted to prove to the world that you weren't some bomb from the neighborhood. And now if you lay down in front of him, you're going to do just that. Yeah. There's that fighting part of Rocky's brain. It's like, ah, this is like the worst. My wife is sick and I've got this fight. He wants everything. He wants his healthy wife and he wants a. Do you know what a mongrel is, Katie? It's like a mutt dog, isn't it? Good job. Like, yeah. yeah. I figured you'd be a dog person. You, sh not, yeah. you should know that you might know because mm -hmm. I actually had to Google it. I wasn't sure. So it's a dog of no definable type or breed. Which, by the way, there's that's a fabulous dog because they are likely to have less health problems. There's nothing like I like that we've moved past thinking that that's, well, not everyone, but mixed breed dogs are awesome. It's used in the same way as the word mutt, and like mutt can be a negative or ironically affectionate. However, mongrel, <laughs> sorry, you guys, you're like this. <laughs> However, mongrel is also a racist slur. Yeah. Applied I to people who are considered to be or who identified as a mixed race. Mm hmm. Is Mickey? Is he, oh, <laughs> oh, is he, oh, Mickey is a racist. <laughs> Mickey is probably employing the dog term mm -hmm. here. They treated us worse than dogs, as pugs from the old yeah, days yeah. or whatever. Knowing that Mickey was originally conceived as a racist, I can't get behind this. <laughs> are you going to be okay for the rest of this episode, Jared? Or are you going to be I all think right? So. Yeah, okay. Because there's a lot of Mickey in this scene here. I, I, would, I would like to say something though about the the sound. Sometimes in the Rocky films, the ADR, the dubbing is very obvious where they go back, you know, after the film's been shot and all this audio with Burgess Meredith was <laughs> captured on the set here. And I, I, maybe it's just because I'm listening with headphones. The, when he starts to shout and you hear the echo of that room it gives his words like it, it puts some like punch behind it. This is all obviously to me audio that was captured on the set because you can hear the room noise. I, I really like that. Really good point. Yeah, for the the effect of this this scene being in the chapel with the echoey. Yeah, the, the high ceilings yeah. and yeah. everything. Yeah. Oh, that good catch. Yeah, and you're right. There is some ADR in this film for sure. I don't want to get mad. In a biblical place like this. He whispers. Yeah, I, I think you're a hell of a lot more than that, kid. A hell of a lot. I don't want to get mad in a biblical place. Yeah, there's no anger shown in the Bible. But it's funny that he starts whispering like he's afraid that he is. Yeah. <laughs> God's listening. Yeah, he's like, come on. So he's given a spiel. Rocky's heard it. And he looks kind of angry. But Mickey does say this. Wait, uh, no, wait a minute. If you want to blow it. If you want to blow this thing, damn it, I'm going to blow it with you. Do you want to stay here? I'll stay with you. I'll stay with you. First, he's saying, this is what we physically need to do to get ready for the fight. But now he's like, I'm not going to be here with you mentally. I'm going to be here with you emotionally. Okay? I've given my spiel about the physical part that is required to beat Apollo. 
great. If, you, if we're not going to fight this guy, if we're not going to fight him, that's fine. I'm going to now just be here for you. He doesn't leave Rocky's side the rest of the time that Adrian's in the coma. Mm-hmm. But I guess he's just selfish and wants success. <laughs> He's just in it for the money. Yeah, this is one of the best Mickey scenes of the whole series. Oh, yeah. I stay in frame. I got to lose. <sighs> he does his dying breath there, the same dying breath there that he does in Rocky Three. <sighs> Old man <laughs> sounds. Kid. Yeah, I lo- like... <laughs> <laughs> that was Yoda's dying. Was that Yoda's dying <laughs> sound there? Yeah, it's sort of. <laughs> oh, man. Old man sounds. There you go. Great shot there of them praying and thinking together about. Now, here we go to the long, drawn out. Rocky is, uh, you know, holding Adrian's hand and praying. And we'll start seeing his beard grow a little bit, I think, as time goes on here. So, what did you guys think last episode? How, how long did this happen? the coma take i think it's five to six days i thought it was like a few days but yeah maybe less less than a week week. less than a week what did what did you think jared i think that's about right now what's your guys' feeling about paulie bringing flowers seeing rocky there by the bedside and then walk away with the flowers and put them on why did he do it like that i've always a little bit been perplexed by that unless the only thing i I can think of is if paulie was hoping to have like some alone time to talk to adrian because we find out later that he feels bad about how he treated her in the past Mm -hmm. 100 percent. okay but i just it shows that he cares about adrian but at the same time he just can't get out of his selfish head like her husband you could just say i'll come back later with the with the flowers or he just comes back later said rocky do you mind you know do you mind if i just put these here and uh do you mind if i just talk to adrian for five minutes alone like rocky would have been Happy to do that. Yeah, the leaving of the flowers scene is odd. Like the not not giving the flowers and I just think Polly is so emotionally stunted. He didn't even want to talk to Rocky. He was just hoping to go in there and maybe talk to his sister. When he saw Rocky there, he's like, I I don't I can't talk to anybody. And yeah. He, because we know in his heart that he loves Adrian uh, later, we see, of course, but he's not very good at, at expressing that. Indeed. Okay. And to so Ryan's Ro- point, oh, go ahead, Mickey's there. Yeah. We see Mickey mm-hmm. there. He's obviously looking for a handout. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he's like, hey, You're- Rock, uh, you got some dinner money here. I'm getting a little hungry. He's reading from maybe the original book where he learned to read. <laughs> He's reading to Adrian. No offense, Rocky, but your reading is just going to put her into a deeper coma. This is this. <laughs> keeping her asleep. Yeah. She's I, no way she's going to snap out of her coma listening to this. Mickey, this is his only entertainment. There's no TV, no iPad. He's got to listen mean, to Rocky what, read. What happened bro. to Dipper? Can he go train Dipper again or something? Yeah, I he's, mean, he's got some prospects in. Yeah, well, where's the hot prospects? He's Man. there for Rocky. He's you know he's yeah. putting that money aside. The crucifix on the wall is ginormous. So much so that I think it could hurt her. Like if it fell off, it would hurt her. Cattle up from the border. Can you hear me, Adrian? Keep listening. There's the beard. It's got to come in a little bit. Got the growth. See? After breakfast. Okay, so keep listening, Adrian. Keep listening. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, it's riveting. She's probably in her head, if they can hear in the coma, like they talked about, in her head, she's like, shut up. It's not ready to be. Or she's telling him that he I, reads nice. I always thought that this entire sequence was kind of a product of Sly's newness as a director. Someone with a little more experience maybe could have tightened this up a little bit. I would have maybe eliminated some of the middle scenes and gone straight to the poem here. You could have combined You could have had him reading at the bedside. Mm-hmm. Polly walks in, sees the reading, walks up, puts mm-hmm. the flowers down because now he's having a moment there. Where he's written, then we got the reading part done, and you can yeah. even have the part where Rocky's like, "Keep listening, Adrian, keep listening," and then Polly turns around and walks out. Perfect. Then you cut to the poem, done. Yeah. Maybe we need it to kind of see the repetitive nature that he's doing the same thing every day, mm-hmm. however many days this is. Mickey's there, he's reading. It's like torturous to them mm-hmm. and to and us viewer. as a viewer. Like yeah. I, I, I've kind of gone back to I think that we need it. Okay. Well, I'm back and forth too, but today I'm on the fourth. So I'm saying, I'm saying edit. <laughs> okay, let's hear some of this beautiful poetry here. And Rocky has never changed clothes. That's part of why we think it's only been a few days. And Mickey hasn't not- changed his underwear yeah. either, so we know mm-hmm. that. No. Well, his racist underwear. I just wrote this thing for you, Adrian. I don't know. Maybe you like it. I'll just read it because uh, 
Remember when we was on ice skates? And I thought you were supposed to be great. But I kept giving you lip. And you kept trying to slip so I could catch you. And that was our first date. And after that, every day was great. So now I want you to know that wherever you go, Atlantic City or in the snow, don't worry about a thing. Because as long as I got this ring, I'll always be there to catch you. Every day was great, except for this last few days with you and the coma. <laughs> It's sweet. It's a bad poem. I'm sorry, Rocky. Yeah, it's, but I think it's in character with yeah. his grammatical right, skills. Yeah. Why Atlantic City? I don't. The choices are Atlantic City or snow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know. Oh, uh, it's adorable. Yeah, it's a beautiful poem, of course. It's, it, you're right. It's showing the simplicity that he's reading and writing now. He's advanced, yeah. you know, in his. Donald does say that the Rocky Four Sly would have had a tighter coma montage. Yeah. Oh, he oh, yeah. for sure. And it would have been and a it would have video. had a Survivor song behind it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Survivor might not be the best band title for a coma scene. Oh, then maybe it would have been yeah. a positive one. Yeah, yeah it could have been. Yeah, that's yeah, true. So it shows a scene there, Polly pacing out in the hallway, refusing to come in the room for some reason. Because mm-hmm. I I, he never comes in the room again. Until the baby, until she wakes up. He is struggling. Like, he's also nervous that his sister might die, but he having a hard time yeah. emotionally. So Adrian's hand starts moving, of course, and we all like, oh, she's alive. And it's a good thing it was Rocky's hand in her hand and not so. <laughs> all right. So I'm well, terrible. What I don't else? know why you put up to me. I am so sorry, Jared. I apologize. <laughs> I say stupid things. I have to edit uh, everything out. And uh, Katie puts up with me every week. Oh, you don't always edit them all out. I still hear stuff. The okay. <laughs> hearing aids help you hear stupid things better. Yeah. So Rocky says, I knew you'd come back. Yeah. Gert brings up an interesting question or point here. Why do I think of The Exorcist now? Two guys reading for her. Maybe Adrian uh, does the 360 twist soon. It does The religiosity of it. I thought the exact same thing. This it seems like an outtake from The Exorcist films. Yeah. It's the same era, too. Wasn't The Exorcist yeah. around this time? I think so. I'm sorry for my bad jokes. I, it's, now it's happy. Yeah. I like All right, we'll stop people. it here. We'll stop it here. Okay, we'll see you next week. No, I'm just joking. All right, well, <laughs> of course, we're going we're gonna to end it just before the montage. So they've got champagne here, looks like, now. And mm-hmm. Polly's brought the drinks. He's he, What's that kind of like? You know, his sister's up. He's happy. He's brought alcohol. He's got a baby's toy on him. Is that baby gloves? Looks like baby gloves around his neck there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boxing gloves. Yeah. Anybody want to refill, Adrian? It costs six bucks a bottle. Now, what's the? That's a pretty good price. It would be like thirty money. bucks, maybe. Man, right? Polly. Like that's a decent bottle of champagne for Polly. Yeah. Yeah, man. Good for him. Do you think anyone's had anything to drink other than him in this room? Mickey has a glass, so he does Mickey's, want. You know, Mickey has one. Yeah. Okay. He wants Adrian to drink. <laughs> yeah. Like right after <laughs> in a coma. I would. If I woke up from a coma, I'd be like, give me a drink, god damn it. Sure, that's fair, that's fair. You shouldn't really nurse and drink, though. I think that's yeah, that's true. true. This is 1979. I don't I don't know. Oh, yeah, they're smoking cigarettes in the yeah. room. That's Come true. on. That's true. And one glass isn't going to kill you. Yeah, I don't need any drinking now. Hey, you haven't seen the baby? No, come on. I was waiting I to see him together. Hey, the kid's a winner. He's got four arms like you, Mickey. <laughs> Here he is now. Look. Oh, no. <laughs> Speaking of what we spoke about earlier in our show regarding the family Stallone, you know, do the sisters know about their half brother, which is right here? This is Sergey yep. Stallone, right here, the real life son of Sly, doing a first cameo appearance in a film. Sergey is uh, he apparently he has some sort of form of autism, and Sly used to be open about it in the mid eighties, and then it just radio silence on the whole issue. It's weird. Mm-hmm. He's got oh, a lot of hair. Baby. There's a lot of hair. Oh. <laughs> Is that it? I love Talia's smile here because it's a real smile that Talia's holding the baby. You can tell she genuinely thinks it's sweet. She's holding Sly's baby. That's kind of cool, though. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. It is. I actually really love this Polly too. Even when he's a kind of a dirtbag, I love the character. Burt Young just sure. does it phenomenally. But I love this. He's happy. He's got his suit on with all the cigars. Like he's just like becoming the fun Uncle Polly. I love it. And he's a great uncle to the kid. A great uncle. Oh, my baby. Oh. <laughs> Is that it? 
Is that it? <laughs> What's all the fuss about? <laughs> I can't believe it. He's Oz? He's really Oz? Thank you. Now oh, come on, you've done all the work. Adrian, I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> believe me, we did. Oh, no, That's ADR. Yeah. We want to call him. <laughs> yeah, you can Paul is a great name. <laughs> His face is so Yeah, Paul, Paul is a pretty good name. <laughs> what about after the father? Rocky Jr. <laughs> come on, you really want to do that? Yeah. Well, Adrian is the best I ever seen. You really done good. This is interesting because moviegoers this time still don't know Rocky's real name. It's a it's weird Rocky lore that we don't know that Rocky's real Christian birth name is Robert. Not yet. So, that's right. Even when he says here Rocky Jr., and she doesn't even say, well, Rocky, it's not your real name. We're going to call him Robert. That would have been the real life conversation, mm -hmm. but a bit of a retcon, so to speak, because mm -hmm. Robert is named after the father, and his name is Robert Rocky. Yeah. When Adrian, the word choice of how about after the father, she says that earlier when they're walking in the park, instead of how about after you? She says, how about after the father? Yeah, that's it's a good a point. That's a, choice. That, that is a good uh, point. It's funny if Rocky says, uh, what, the, uh, the, uh, who is uh, it? Uh, Spider Rico? <laughs> Spider Junior? <laughs> you look so tired. Why don't you go get some sleep? Oh, no, no, I feel great. I feel great. Listen, I've been thinking. It might even only be 48 hours because maybe he's just been up for because Italians and dark, you know, darker haired people, they can grow a five o'clock shadow very quickly. So it might, he might have just been up for two days, two days straight. That's legit. Kind of looks like two days growth. So mm -hmm. he's been up for 48 hours and she said, you look tired because he yeah. hasn't slept in two days. That's, that would be more. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, you know what? I'm going with two days. So you know what? I have, I have the, the novelization. Supposedly oh. written by Sly. Oh. So I might I might look it up and see it in the in the book. How dare says. you? How dare you say that Sly had a ghostwriter for those books? How dare you? And <laughs> However, well, if you read Rocky Two, he writes it in the first person. There's uh, very smart people that could do it for him. He's a great screenwriter, but did he really write the novel? Did he really write the novel? I don't know. I'm just I'm fifty. He's, he's only the credited author of Rocky Two and Rocky Four. It's other people On the books? wrote. Yeah. Oh, okay. So right. I, I don't know. Who knows? I've not read so. any of the novelizations. If you're a Rocky fan, every Rocky fan should do it. Do you own them all? I own the first and the second one. Uh, but you can listen, interestingly enough, to audiobook versions of them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Are those professional readers or are those just no? Fans they're the, they're people who you know. Yeah, I can't. I, it just shows you how good those audiobook readers are because yeah. it's a real talent to do it, where it's not mm -hmm. annoying. I've tried to listen yeah. to people that aren't paid by Audible or whatever, and they don't mm -hmm. sound very yeah. good. Well, terribly. if you can track them down on eBay or find them in a used bookstore, well, it's definitely uh, worth. I would be happy if someone sent them to me via mail, and I send them back. That's how badly I want to read them. If that makes sense. <laughs> If you're if someone listening, you or anyone, I don't put you on the spot. They're hard to find. Hey, you got to use some of that Patreon money and <laughs> oh, buy, buy you the just show the, take it out of the show budget. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the Patreon money for the novelizations they're not available for five bucks. They're expensive. Yeah, they're actually a little more than that. Yeah. Anyways, all right. I didn't mean to put you on that. So Sorry. that was a hard no from Jared there. Okay. Whoa, whoa, that. no, right. no. Yeah, I, no, I got it. No, I, I I read between the lines. I got it. All right. It, Let's move on. So Rocky goes, if you don't want me to mix with the Creed no more. Mixing with Creed no more. We'll make out some other kind of way, you know. There's one thing I want you to do for me. What? Come here. What? Win. Take this. There we go. That's it. What do you think Mickey says there? The close captioning is not consistent across various media. It says, one says, take this. Somebody's referring to his champagne glass. That there said, take us. It could just be old man noises, as Katie says. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I think it makes the most sense if he says, take this, because he, as he says it, he's motioning to give he's whoever his glass. Yes. We don't see him handing anything over to anyone, but off screen, Polly was to his right. And he, no, he was did. He, I think we did see him. Oh, hand, like really? I'll go back. I could be wrong. Sorry. I could be wrong too, wrong. but I thought so. He goes, what are you waiting for? Take the uh, cap. Say take us, but you're right. Could yeah. say, take this. Take this. See, it we don't like see take this right there. It does mm -hmm. sound more like take this, but I'm just saying there's no one shown there. There's we don't see who's there next to him. He just turns to his right and leaves. 
Am I, am I not seeing it? Katie? You're a little convinced. I'm telling you, we do. We well, see, I guess we, I Polly was standing there. That's what I said off screen. Yeah. He's off. But screen. I thought he I guess I could have been wrong. You're right. We didn't see an arm extended. I made that up in my mind, perhaps. Yes. Well, you did. <laughs> I thought you said, like I'm telling you, we're looking at the movie. There's nobody there. Do I have to show you the scene again? <laughs> no, no. Well, I, I thought the same thing. I thought I saw him reach out, but yeah, uh, like you, know. uh, you see kind of his shoulder or something. But any at any rate, we don't need to. You know, I mean, if you guys are convinced that I'm, I'm just, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just saying I'm with you, but there's nobody there. I think it's in our. I think we did the uh, theater of the mind. Maybe that we know Polly is next. So to Polly me. is yes. actually on the other side of him. Maybe it's the nurse, the nurse. Are we waiting for? Take this. So he does do kind of a look to somebody. Well, he, he, does he looks yeah. over at someone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's probably what. So I think our theater of the mind mm-hmm. put Polly is the person he's looking at. So if you say, take this, he's handed his champagne glass. It's still kind of a weird dialogue. All of it's kind of weird because mm-hmm. I've always said, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Yeah, what are exactly. we waiting for? <laughs> Let's start training. What are we waiting for? We got business to take care of. What are you waiting for? Take the champagne glass, Polly. <laughs> <laughs> However, in real life, that's something you might actually say. Somebody take this for me so I can leave now. Yeah, yeah, it's just funny. I, I love these things. That's yeah. what makes these uh, commentaries fun. Well, guys, that was a amazingly amazing fun episode. I hope people enjoyed it. We did finish part two of the coma. That was the goal. We had some fun conversations. I think they were fun at the beginning regarding Paul. Thank you for your your YouTube challenge. He offered us the challenge. We gave mm-hmm. our rebuttal. I look forward to hearing his thoughts regarding our uh, rebuttal. If he, I don't think he listens to the show, so it's up to him. <laughs> Watch the family still known. I think if you guys haven't already, get Paramount Plus. The very least, why? Because you get the Tulsa King, which is a fantastic show starring Sylvester so Stallone. Good. So good. And so as a bonus, you'll get the Family Stallone show as well for five bucks. Whatever is ten bucks. Yeah. Uh, maybe wait till the Family Stallone is all out, and then you can just binge it in one week. Paramount Plus does have a free trial. So Oh, there you go. Seven days free. You can binge yeah. Family Stallone when it's all released. And then watch Tulsa King the same week. It's really that fantastic. Thank you, Gert. Mm-hmm. Gert said it was a good episode. Well, thank you, Gert. We yeah, appreciate thanks that. thanks for joining. Thank you. Thanks, for everyone, that joined us live. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jared, for coming on the show. Check out Jared's My show, pleasure. The Hyperspace Podcasting in the 21st Century. He wrote that out for me on the screen there so I could say it properly. Thank you, Yes, Jared. I did. <laughs> Brian, do you do struggle with that, don't you? I, I do. I'm sorry. Every time I, I hear you talk about it, you're like, he got um, hyperspace, the 25th, <laughs> the 25th century podcast. Uh, and it makes me laugh, though. Oh, good. I'm glad you laugh. Okay. All right. Well, however, the episode is over. I didn't hear no bell. I just want to say-